light that guides you burns itself out. A flicker of hope will show you to the darkest point. Through the unknown you must go. Seek and you shall find a light that shines so bright. Guys, if you're a night owl like I tend to be, then you might know that the stock headlight leaves much to be desired. Originally, I put this Cyclops H4 LED replacement bulb in the stock headlight housing, and that worked quite well for about two years, and then the high beam just quit working one day. I then purchased the original JNS Engineering LED headlight, and I've had it for about two years, and it's still going strong. JNS Engineering sells headlights for a few different bikes but recently they sent me their new one for the TW200 and this one is DOT approved so it's technically street legal unlike the old one. For this video I'll go ahead and remove my auxiliary lights so they don't get in the way and interfere with the testing. Starting with the original light, I got this one in black, but there is a chrome version as well. In the box there is a sticker, two smaller 10mm bolts, instructions, and the light itself with a protective film over the lens. Installing both these JNS lights is super easy and should take only about 5 minutes to do. I'll start by removing the screw from the lower part of the fairing with a big Phillips screwdriver. Swing the bottom out and unclip each side from the upper grommets. Remove the two long 10mm bolts on each side of the stock headlight. The bottom slot pulls up from the rubber grommet. Now the H4 connector can be disconnected and the old headlight removed. The JNS headlights are plug and play, but in case you're wondering for reference, when looking at the plug from behind, the left pin is the ground and uses a black wire. Top pin is low beam and uses a green wire. The right pin is the high beam and uses a yellow wire. The power is switched between high and low beams, but both pins won't be powered at the same time. I have an aftermarket harness feeding off the ground and high beam pins. This plugs into my auxiliary lights, and I share more about that in another video. This original JNS headlight also has an optional LED daytime running lamp that can be powered by any 12 volt power source by using an extra spade connector. I never actually use this, and it's pretty much pointless as you will see in a few minutes, however if you did want to use it you could wire it into maybe the front running lamps or you could have it feed into the high beam wire on the harness. Just for this video I did rig up this harness that goes into my auxiliary light connector just so I can show you what it does. Next connect the H4 plugs together and slide the slot through the rubber grommet. It may start to grab the grommet and I used a screwdriver to push it back so it slides in all the way. Position the light so the adjustment slots line up with the holes. I like to use a bit of blue Loctite on the included short 10mm bolts. Be sure to thread them in by hand at first with the bolts just slightly loose so you can angle the light in different positions. Moving on to the new and improved DW200 headlight that JNS Engineering sent me to try out. You can get this one in black or chrome as well. 
Along with the headlight and sticker, there are two hex bolts and two washers instead of the 10 millimeter bolts. JNS also sent me two auxiliary light brackets made to fit the TW, but these are sold separately and I will save those for another video. Unlike the old one, the new light appears to be DOT and SAE approved, which means it's legal for street use in the United States. This one should be quite a bit brighter and possibly more durable. It only costs 10 extra bucks at the making of this video. One thing I should mention is the biggest part you're paying for with these JNS JNS lights is the custom TW200 bracket. It appears you can buy the 4x6 LED lights themselves fairly cheaply. The old JNS light has a bracket that screws into the back of the light. The new one, lacking threads on the back, uses a different type of bracket that clamps around the lens. The cool thing about these is that if you ever have a light that goes bad or gets smashed in the future, you can easily swap a new one into the custom bracket. You may also need to swap the pins around on the H4 connector. Installing this one is basically the same except you throw a washer on each bolt and use a 4mm allen wrench to tighten them down. It also doesn't have a daytime running lamp wired to worry about. But before you tighten them down, next we're going to want to adjust the headlight height because you don't want to blind people when you're going down the road and you also want to be able to see where you're going. So you want to get it just perfect. And I think I figured the perfect way to do this. So when I came home from work, I uh, parked my car right here and I took note of where the low beam on my car was. I'm going to Hold my headlight right there and tighten it down with that four millimeter Allen wrench. All right, once it's tightened down, it's exactly where you want it. It's time to put the front fairing on. It just clips onto these rubber bushings and then you screw on that little Phillips. And that's it, it's time to go for a night ride. To get accurate wattage measurements in the context of the TW200, I will need to know the highest voltage it runs at. I found it to stay a consistent 14.3 volts with the throttle raised. As a side note with the stock headlight, the TW200 stator does not have as much output when idling so the voltage will start to drop some, but it'll go back up once the throttle is raised and you're riding down the road. With my power supply set to exactly 14.3 volts, I'll start with the stock low beam. Volts times amps will give us around it 69 watts, way more than the 55 watt low beam rating shown on the bulb. And as a side note, this is the stock bulb that originally came with my TW. The high beam consumes a whopping 79 watts and not exactly efficient. Next we have the original JNS light and the low beam is the two side lights and uses a measly 14 watts. The high beam will additionally flip on the light in the middle and uses a total of 24 watts. The daytime running lamp by itself uses only 3 watts. Moving on to the new DOT JNS light, these three lights are powered on for the low beam and it uses 19 watts. The high beam powers all the LED lights on and uses a total of 32 watts. My old Cyclops bulb decided to start working again for this video. The low beam measured at 23 watts and the high only measured at 15 watts and that's just because the LED drivers for the high beam are not looking so good. Cyclops has come out with a new and improved version of that bulb, so let me know if you would like to see a video comparing that to the rest of the lights, and maybe I'll get one of those cheap knockoff H4 LED bulbs like you'd get on Amazon or eBay just to compare to see what the difference is. But it is pretty wild how none of these lights are even remotely accurate to what they are rated at on paper. Maybe it's because these LED drivers can handle way more voltage, but I'm not entirely sure. However, I found this to be a consistent thing with other LEDs I have tested as well. It's interesting how the halogen bulb was way in the other direction as far as accuracy goes. This is great news though because the new light compared to the halogen bulb will free up a whole 47 watts and that will be plenty to add heated grips and or auxiliary lights without putting extra stress on the electrical system. For the following tests I will be using manual camera settings so you can tell the difference in brightness between the lights. Next let's do a beam pattern comparison test. Here is the stock low beam, it has decent cutoff but with a raised hot spot in the middle. Here's what the high beam looks like and it just fills the top. 
This is the original JNS headlight low beam. It has a much wider spread than the stock light. Cutoff is not terrible and slopes up in the middle slightly. The low beam is quite good, but the high beam is really where this light falls short. It just gives you a bright spot in the middle and it's not much higher up than the low beam cutoff. Here's what the daytime running lamp by itself looks like and it's pretty much pointless because half of it is either way up too high and the other half is down too low. After using this light for quite a while, I had always wished the high beam spot could have been higher up or adjust it independently of the low beam. The new JNS DOT light is a huge improvement. It seems to have an even wider spread than the original one. The high beam is what makes this thing so much better. It's gonna really help you see around the corners compared to just having that spot right in the middle. Next, I'll do a comparison test to see how they light up my driveway. Next, let's see how they look in the forest. Now let's see how they look while I'm riding, and I did lock the exposure on the GoPro, but overall it'll probably look a little bit dimmer because it's a different camera. So as you guys could probably tell in the writing video is that the aftermarket headlights bleed a lot of unnecessary light up through this front fairing and that just gets on the visor and kind of leaves a little bit of a glare and it makes it harder to see. And the reason the stock headlight doesn't do that is because it's got all that foam stuck around the lens so it blocks all the extra light coming through the back. But you guys down in the comments always give me such good ideas uh, and someone said something about it in the last video. So I'll start with uh, just making sure it's really clean um, so that tape can actually stick. I just got an alcohol prep pad. Let's clean up really good around there. But yeah, this is a gaffer's tape. Uh, you could probably use duct tape. I really like gaffer's tape. It's kind of expensive, but it doesn't leave all that residue and it still sticks extremely well. I'll make it a little bit longer because um, you can always trim it up. And then I'll take another piece. And I want to take one piece and overlap it and try to make it even. And just on one side, you want to kind of fold it over. Now I'm going to try to lay it down in there, I guess. That should work. And then I'm just going to make some cuts on the side. I'll take another piece and put it 
on the other side just so it stays stuck on there really well kind of just match these in size no that is not what i want to happen oh. wow okay actually you know what that's fine that'll work all right and then i got two of the little flaps left and i'll just uh try to put those on the side that should be perfect And then I'll do the same thing with these, the piece on the other side. All right, now we got some cool little flappy doos on the top and side there. So that should keep the extra light from bleeding in. So let's see how it does. So yeah, those uh, little flaps definitely help that light from sneaking on through there. Uh, thank you to whoever gave me that idea. I can't remember who it was. Anyways, all in all the new DOT approved headlight is so much better than that original one, um, especially on the corners with the high beam, because that's really what was terrible about that original one, because you just had that spot in the middle and it didn't give you light around the corners. But after reviewing the actual riding footage, the stock headlight is really not bad at all. Um, it definitely has a lot more overspill uh, on the high beam. It kind of gives you a lot more light like closer to the bike, which uh, some people might like a little bit better because these headlights, you know, they're just a very specific shape and they have a sharp cutoff like all the way around. But I think the JNS ones definitely have a wider reach um, out to the sides at least a bit brighter. They did upgrade the headlight in uh, starting in 2001, I believe. So if you have a TW that's older than that, it's probably not gonna be as bright. I think they might have upgraded the stator as well, but I'm not completely sure. I do feel like the high beam on the DOT one could be a bit brighter, but it's still not terrible. But that stock bulb is just so inefficient. It's definitely worth getting LED lights. Then I could put auxiliary lights and the grip heaters on here, hopefully. Uh, I will definitely do wattage tests on those as well to make sure I'm not going over. But I wanna know from you guys, what headlight did you like the best? Be sure to let me know down in the comments below. I definitely want to get that new Cyclops H4 bulb um, just to see how that compares to the JNS lights. Of course, I'll get one of those like cheap H4 LED bulbs too just to see what the difference is. Another thing to keep in mind is that these plastic lenses like to scratch pretty easily. As you can probably tell, my original JNS one was pretty scratched up. And I actually scratched the new one up just like sliding it on the plastic table. It must have like got a piece of dirt on it or something just left a nice little scratch on it but they're really easy to resurface i might even make a video on how to like refinish them make the lenses look brand new but anyways i'm gonna be working a lot on like a bunch of older motor camping and adventure trips i went on because i have so much content it's just sitting around needing to be edited and i always keep picking like new stuff but I would like to get all that done. It's some like really interesting stuff too. So that's what I'm gonna be working on most of the rest of the winter, uh, cause it is quite cold. Maybe I'll throw in a few quick how-to videos here and there. But anyways, thanks for watching guys and I will see you next time. Peace out.